Welcome to our presentation on the geriatric bicycle. Uh, I'm Wesley. I'm Ryan. I'm Ian. And we'd like to present to you today what we've um, managed to accomplish in the last few months on producing a controller that will keep a bike vertical. Now, we all know that you guys are concerned and worried about Professor Hennigan getting older. We are too, and we know that one of the problems associated with aging is that it becomes difficult for you to keep your balance. And so the purpose of um, our controllers uh, is, is to be able to keep someone on a bicycle vertical despite disturbances such as wind blowing or small bumps in the road, um, even just pedaling or being pulled by football, anything that a normal cyclist might come in contact with during the day. And uh, that way, Professor Hennigan will be able to continue bicycling to work in his old age. Some of this, um, in our model, we had to account for all the torques um, that would be involved in moving a person on a bicycle back to vertical from their tilt angle. Um, those torques would be the torque due to, due to gravity, and then the torque from disturbances, which we mentioned earlier, and uh, we were going to use this torque from the momentum wheel in order to capture that. All right, so here are our governing equations. The top one is a torque balance on the person bike system, and the bottom one is the torque balance on the momentum wheel. So you can see from these equations, we're looking at a system of second order nonlinear differential equations. So we had to linearize these a bit and do some other tricks to get them in more of a, a standard form. And so the first thing we did was we programmed a PID controller to account for some of these disturbances. And we started with pretty simple tests, just a one Newton little poke right at five seconds on these graphs. And so on the left graph, you can see the angle of the bicycle measured in radians and as you can see about 20 seconds after the disturbance it goes crazy and basically what we imagine happening here is the bikes slamming the rider back and forth into the ground and while it's doing this it's also pulling 5 times 10 to the 20 amps which is not a reasonable or safe number so we named this controller the geriatric death trap and we do not recommend it for Dr. Hedingren. So we went and we found some information on what's called a linear quadratic regulator controller. It's based on state space matrices and it's a model predictive controller. And so on the left you have a basic diagram of how the controller works. The matrices or the blocks that say A, B, and C are the A, B, and C matrices in state space form. The block labeled 1 over S is simply an integration form in Laplace space, and the bottom block there, K, is essentially the controller. And so using this type of controller, on the bottom you see our disturbances. The spikes that you see are we imagine, we imagine Tom Brady repeatedly throwing footballs at the rider. And so those are the spikes are being repeatedly hit with a football, and then the small variations closer to the bottom are simply things like wind and pedaling and bumps in the road and other small disturbances. And then the top graph shows the result, the angle of the bike through all of this. And it's much more stable, hangs out much closer to zero degrees. But we also included some reference lines of 22.5 degrees where we didn't want the bike to tip beyond those points. Um, not only just for like comfort and safety riding, but also because that's where our linearization of our model is still accurate. So in conclusion, for our particular system, we'd like to recommend a linear quadratic regulator style controller. It allows for the nonlinearity of the system and um, is the best fit, we feel, for the design specifications that we had. It also yields some very reasonable parameters in real life. The motor for the flywheel, for the momentum wheel, never pulled more than 15 amps 
Uh, the momentum wheel was of a reasonable weight uh, on the order of five kilograms, which would be about 12, 11 pounds. And disturbances were properly accounted for even when they went to the extreme. Um, in the future, we'd like to recommend moving this system into two dimensions, um, having it not necessarily be on a bike, but it could potentially be for any kind of person who's trying to achieve stabilization in walking or those types of situations. Also in the future, we'd like to include a little bit more robust calculations that we didn't include for simplicity's sake, such as accounting for friction, um, getting more uh, finding an actual lightweight motor that would meet our specifications. We used the best that we could find. And that's where we'd like to go in the future. And we'd like to thank the University of Michigan and the Kubli Research Institute for Dynamics, Systems, and Control for helping us with their academic papers on this subject to develop this type of controller. And thank you very much.